And we continue our coverage of the debate regarding back to school plans tonight. That includes new pushback from Colorado teachers. The Colorado Education Association, which has 39,000 members across the state, says teachers might refuse to return to work next month if four specific demands aren't met. News Channel 13's Lauren Barnes joins us live in studio tonight to tell us what those are. Lauren. The association says although schools received one time federal stimulus money, it's not enough to keep students and staff safe from the virus. And until they feel it is safe, they're pushing for remote learning. It would absolutely devastate our students or staff if they felt responsible for hospitalizing or causing the death of a fellow teacher or student. 78% of teachers who responded to a Colorado Education Association survey said they would join their colleagues in refusing to go back to work if four demands aren't met. First and foremost, they want their voices heard. One, employees' voice and safety must drive decision making through honoring bargaining rights or a vote of approval from all employees. Second, safety measures for students and staff. Third, transparency and data behind decision making. And fourth, equity for students and staff no matter where learning takes place. Even the classrooms that have windows in my building, um, they're not operable. A high school math teacher in Jefferson County says he's worried about his classroom's ventilation. Although I've been assured by my um, a facility manager that my school's HVAC system has been updated recently. The air in my classroom almost always feels fairly stale and usually ranges from warm to uncomfortably warm no matter the time of year. Lisa Larson works with special education students. I have students that regularly pull the glasses off my face because they don't like something that's different. She says masks and social distancing won't work with them. Some of our students drool. Some of our students spit, some of our students hit. A Pueblo School District 60 teacher has similar concerns about the young kids. It's, there's a lot of contact. In an elementary school, we tie shoes and zip zippers. We button their buttons. The association also thinks the state's guidelines released Monday were too vague and at times contradictory. There should not be large gatherings. You shouldn't be in closed spaces for a long amount of time with a large group of people. Um, but then the guidance that came out yesterday said there are no class size limits for K through 8. And the association also says the fact that yesterday's announcement from the state was held on Zoom is hypocritical as the Department of Education promotes in-person learning through an online platform. I also reached out to districts 20 and 49 to see if the Education Association's demands have any impact on their reopening plans, but did not hear back this afternoon.